Hello there, YouTube. This is Sibbles and Bits back at it again with some more month of uh, Tiny Rogues content. Today, we're going to be looking into how weapon scaling in Tiny Rogues works and more or less debunking some misconceptions that you might have and explaining when weapon scaling is important to think about and when it's not. The reason why uh, this header looks like this is because um, due to follower feedback, I have decided that I'm going to leave a link in the description of this uh, video for a spreadsheet similar to this one, so that if you want to on your own time, go ahead, download it, punch in some numbers, you can go ahead and do that. However, just due to the timing of today and this week uh, with real life, there will not immediately be a link down in the description. I've done this on Excel because I can do that during work. Don't tell my boss. But um, I want to have the publicly available one available on Google Sheets, which hopefully can do everything that this does. We'll tackle that road later. But um, if it's not there in the description, just go ahead, check back later. I might even uh, post a community post saying that a, this is now available in case you guys are interested, so that you guys can go ahead and download this if you think that you want to. But I think that for the most part, um, the point is going to be easy enough to get across through this video. So we have an Excel spreadsheet here, and I suppose I should also verify that uh, this is as of the recent patch in January 25th. So this is version 0.2.2, which is a couple patches after the Between Heaven and Hell um, expansion, I guess to call it. So if this gets changed in the future, then it will be irrelevant. And hopefully I'll, it'll be simple enough to where I can just update it. Anyways, apologies. So over here, we just have a general listing of what scaling does and what it's referred to in-game as letter grades. Um, it either has no scaling, it's E scaling, D, C, B, A, S, or S plus in some cases, which can only be obtained, in my knowledge, with a plus one to scaling. And the game, or how I'm going to... how I choose to do it in the spreadsheet in order to make the magic happen, so to speak, I have then turn those into number tiers. And so when you see plus one deck scaling, all that's doing is turning your B into an A and so on and so forth. And so depending on which scaling level you are at, each point of that relative stat, your strength scaling, of course, choosing your strength, your strength will be multiplied into that scaling percent in order to come up with how much strength scaling you have. And then of course over here, this is basically just taking the information from over there, allowing you to plug in some values and giving you a final number that you're able to see. There are a couple of hidden columns here. We're only going to unhide them for now so that I can explain them. Um, the scaling column here has a drop down so that you can go ahead and select whatever you want, whatever you want this to be, you can go ahead and do that. And so then what the, we have a VLOOKUP command that is then looking for S and then plugging in these values here so that it can do all the work for you down here. But this can all go ahead and be hidden. So we will go ahead and hide that. And then of course, so if I have 60 strength with S scaling, my strength is providing 195% damage with weapon scaling. Same thing with my dexterity and my intelligence. And then all this gets added up into your total weapon scaling, which if you look underneath your um, in your offensive stats, where it shows your weapon scaling, down at the bottom, there will be a gray, I believe the color is percentage. And that's exactly what this percentage is. So this is just showing, doing all the work for, for you to show how it comes down to that number. You'll also notice as you go up to like say doors with food where it'll tell you, okay, this is going to give you this much weapon scaling. 
that's just showing okay well if you have this much web if you have this level weapon scaling and you're going to increase your strength by one you're going to increase your weapon scaling by plus 3.35 percent let's say so then down here i also have some sections here for if you are given the opportunity to give plus one strength scaling plus one deck scaling, plus one int scaling, how much more damage is that going to give you? With an emphasis on more. Your weapon scaling is a multiplier, which means that we're able to break it apart and look at it against itself, but it's going to interact multiplicatively with literally everything else in the game, so everything else doesn't matter. We're just worried about how much damage we're actually adding to our character with weapon scaling. So the concept of more is more or less what this is doing is it's increasing the scaling by another plus one on this chart, then multiplying your strength into that, and then tallying up everything again, and then looking at if you were to compare how much damage you were doing before, how much damage you're doing afterwards, what is the difference between those two values? And as you can see here, if we were to add plus one strength scaling and get to an S plus, which the conception would be that S plus is the best scaling that you could possibly have, we would only increase our damage by 2.52%. So the only ways of strength scaling, deck scaling, and scaling that I have seen in the game thus far is there is a pair of gloves called Ninja Gloves, which will give you plus one deck scaling, a Rubik's Puzzle Cube, I believe it's called, or Rubik's Cube, just got reworked to where after you solve it or the item is attuned, it gives you plus one deck scaling. Or there is a couple of events. One event is in Forgotten Minds. I call it Dwarven Bedroom. Um, and basically what it does is it spawns three items that have the legendary Dwarven enchant. And what that does is it does plus one to all weapon scaling. So it's going to add a plus one to your strength, dex, and intelligence weapon scaling just in total. And being in Forgotten Minds, that means that it's on floor two. And that gives you an incredibly good weapon if the weapon it rolls is good. Because no matter what stats you have you're going to be able to scale it. Another event is in Glacier or Frozen Tundra. I don't know the name of the biome. It's the newly added ice level. That one has an event that I just call Happy Feet, where you have the three penguins that are wearing bow ties, red for strength, green for dexterity, blue for int, and you do a little dance dance revolution, like Simon Says minigame, and then they will give you an accessory that will give you plus one of that relative scaling. And that's like a mid to late game. So at that point, you actually might have a final weapon that you're going to end up with. And so being able to get scaling might seem worth your next slot. Now, it's at this point that I'm going to go ahead and show that obviously... The difference between going up one scaling level is only 0.1%. In the example of strength here, if I added plus one strength scaling, then the difference between this level that I had before and the level that I'm at now is going to be 6% increased weapon scaling. But since I already have, in this case, 195% weapon scaling, plus with the other ones that we have, for a total of 236, that's only going to bring us that number, that weapon scaling number, from 238 to 244, which results in 2.5% increased damage, which, for an action that you would think would be good for your build, is not worth your next slot. Also taking a look here, if we were to increase our intelligence scaling, we would actually double the amount of increased damage that we would add to our build, but only five intelligence. The reason for that is having any scaling at all, even at E, is worth 2.75% per point. So, 
to summarize this, having scaling in general is significantly better than having good scaling, so to speak, because going all the way up to S plus is only an increase in like 25%. And there's no way to go all the way from E to S. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, good weapons are going to be good, regardless of how much uh, how much stats you put into them. But obviously, if you can afford to double their damage by having them give relevant scaling, that's obviously much better. So this is obviously a very skewed example. If we were to look at a much more realistic endgame situation, go ahead and put uh, 15 on each. And let's say that we do have access to the Rubik's Cube. So then we switch over to Dexterity. By having 15 Dexterity and increasing our Dexterity scaling, we are now providing ourselves with 17% more damage. That's starting to be more worth our next slot. You might even be in the unfortunate situation where you actually have a Dex build, but no weapon that scales off of it. Putting on the Rubik's Cube or the Ninja Gloves is now absolutely worth your build because at this point, you are tripling your damage or near tripling your damage. You are increasing your damage by 180%. So these are the sort of things that you need to look out for. And again, to iterate, it's better to have scaling than to have good scaling. So in an instance where you have like an amount of a stat in any like reasonable amount, even 15, adding scaling that you don't have on your weapon that you're already intending to take to end game is significantly more worth your time than increasing a scaling that you already have. And then of course, as a little bonus here, I do have, let's go ahead and put all this stuff back, an example here for heavy draw, mainly because we're talking about weapon scaling and it involves weapon scaling. So we might as well talk about it, right? So basically, again, what this is doing, or what the trait does, is it takes half of your strength and then adds it to your dexterity scaling. So as long as you have any dexterity scaling, let's go ahead and put an E there, uh, with the stipulation that, of course, that it does have to be a ranged weapon per the trait, you obviously have, like, any amount of strength, this is good. This is a trait that it's increasing your damage by 35%. You want your traits to increase your damage by 20% more damage. So this is like double a normal trait. Let's go ahead and just put equal dexterity. 15 dexterity and uh, 15 strength. That is still increasing your damage by 20%. So let me note that in this recent patch, heavy draw got nerfed to only give half. It used to give 100% of your strength into your dexterity, which meant that this was technically giving you 30, which was 30%. And this is why strength uh, strength traits are so cracked and got like a huge nerf in this recent update is because one, strength is good because it is a damage multiplier. And two, for whatever reason, their, um, their traits are absolutely bonkers. Another thing I wanna add just at the end of this video is that Again, if you're worried about doing all the math yourself, you don't have to. Because if you are looking at an item on the ground or in your inventory, the number that is on that, as in dealing 200 damage to 400 damage, that number will scale with the relevant scaling levels. So if you're looking at an item that has strength scaling, and you got a good item on the ground that has deck scaling, you are actually comparing apples to apples as far as the end, like the final damage that's listed on the item on the ground. So you don't have to worry about that. It will also take into account any buffs that you might currently have active, including potions, and any mana, if it is a mana relevant weapon. So keep that in mind as well. So hopefully, um, this was able to answer some questions that people might have had or 
again, sort of kabosh the whole idea that you need to get your scaling as high as possible or a weapon that has like A scaling is better than a weapon that has B scaling. Again, at the end of the day, weapons are going to be different and each weapon wants think different things from you in order to succeed and it's not necessarily going off of that weapon scaling. For example, a weapon could be more interested in you actually dealing lucky hits instead of you actually having, say, decks. Or it could be more interested in you dealing cursed hits, and so that's where it's getting most of its effect scaling from. If you have any questions whatsoever or any feedback, maybe I forgot to explain something, maybe you feel like I left something out and you want to contribute to the conversation, feel free to put any of that down in the comments below. And until next time, I will catch you guys around.